All right, so um, number 50 was requested to be done from the homework package. So number 50. Um, the question says that um, from a roof of a building that is 50 meters high, so we have a building that is 50 meters high, a ball is thrown with the velocity of 5 meters per second at 25 degrees below the horizontal. So the horizontal is a studded line. It's being thrown at an angle of 25 below that with a velocity of 5 meters per second. So the first question, uh, question A, is asking us how long does it take to hit the ground? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take a look at the information that we've been given and notice that our initial velocity here has an angle associated with it. So we need to break that up into its x and y components. So to do that, our vix is equal to the initial velocity times the cosine of our angle. So 5 times the cosine of 25. And if we were to put that into a calculator, we would get, uh, just give me a moment, 5 cosine of 25 would give us 4.5 meters per second. Now we can do the same thing for VIY, except instead of cosine, we will be using the sine. So 5 sine 25, sine 25 will give us a velocity of 2.1 meters per second. So this is our first step. Now what we want to do is we want to write down all of the variables that we know in both our x and y components. So let's start with our x components right here. We know that our vix is 4.5 meters per second. We know that the final velocity is the same as our initial velocity because in the horizontal it is in constant uniform rectilinear motion. So there's no acceleration. So the final velocity will be the same as the initial. Um, so V F X is 4.5 meters per second. Now we do not know what our Delta X is. And we also do not know what our Delta T is. Now, if we look at the Y components, we know that our initial velocity is 2.1 meters per second. So V I Y is 2.1 meters per second. We know that our Delta Y is 50 meters <clears throat> and we also know what our acceleration is. So our acceleration is 9.81. Now, you might be asking me, why didn't I put the negative in front? Well, the reason for that is because we're looking at something that's being thrown down. So the motion, the initial motion that we're observing is in the same direction as gravity. So what we're looking at is a positive direction, even though it, it's moving down, but from the perspective of the ball, it is moving in the positive direction. So gravity has become positive. This is a very special case where our gravity is going to be a positive value. It's not always the case. Most often it's negative, but in this particular case, it is positive. Uh, we do not know what our V 
f y is, and we do not know what the delta t is. So question A, let's do question A up here. Question A is asking for how long does it take to hit the ground? So we are looking for our delta t. Now when you look at the formula sheet, you would notice that there is one formula that we can use, and it is yf is equal to yi plus vi y delta t plus a delta t squared over 2. If we wanted to try to use the others, we would notice that we would have to find our final velocity first. But in this case, we don't have that. So we have to use this formula here. Now, if you bring this over, bring the y i over, it will become delta y is equal to v i y delta t plus your acceleration times your time squared over two. Once you've got this, you can start plugging in your values. So my delta y is 50, my viy is 2.1 delta t, we do not know, plus 9.81 delta t squared, whoops, forgot that t there, delta t over two. All right, so you would divide this to get a 4.91 delta t squared. Okay, so once you've got to this spot, you notice that we have a delta t here and a delta t squared. Now, we can't just solve this using the normal methods that we would use. What you do have to realize though is that this is a quadratic formula. This is essentially like a or x squared, this is like your x, and this is your constant. So let's rearrange this formula to fit that. So I would bring this over, and then I would put this in front, and put this second, and then this third. So I'm just going to rearrange it. It's not going to change anything. So it becomes 0 on this side. I'm going to put this 4.91 delta t squared plus 2.1 delta t minus 50. So now we have a form that we can use to use with our quadratic formula. So I'm just going to change my color here. Um, so here, this is our a value. This will be the b, and this is our c. So if you remember the quadratic formula, um, in this case, it would be delta t is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This is our quadratic formula. <clears throat> So let's put in our values. So delta t is equal to negative 2.1 plus or minus square root of 2.1 squared minus 4 times 4.91 times negative 50 over 2 times 4.91. When we simplify this, we would get the following inside your square root. So 2.1, so 2.1 uh, squared minus 4 times 4.91 times negative 50 
would give us nine, oops, nine, eight, six point four one. Let's just move this up a little bit so that we can see that a little bit better. All right, and then this would be all over uh, two times four point nine one, which is nine point eight one. Okay, so. When you solve for this, you are going to get two answers. You're going to get delta t is equal. So we're going to do um, the negative 2.1 plus the square root of 986.41 um, and then divide that by the 9.81. We would get an answer of 3 seconds. Now your other answer that you're going to get is when you subtract it, so negative 2.1 minus the square root of 986.41 and then you divide that by the 9.81 and you're going to get negative 3.4 seconds. So when you're answering the question we cannot use this number here. Uh, and the reason for that is because negative time doesn't exist. What we would do is instead we would use this number right here. So our delta t in this case is three seconds. And that is your final answer. Now we can go ahead and erase those question marks and we can fill in our answers here. So three seconds. Now, Question B, and let me just erase, let me just erase this now, now that we've done this. Question B is asking what is the final velocity of the ball before it hits the ground? So, question B. What we want to look for is we are looking for our V, F, Y, essentially. But we're not only looking for our final velocity in the Y direction, we want to find out what the velocity is uh, when it hits the ground. So we want to know the vector. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find our V of Y and then use Pythagoras theorem with our V of X to find what our V F is. So let's do the V of Y. We don't know what this is yet. So if we take a look at our formulas, we would see that this formula V F Y is equal to VIY plus your acceleration times your delta T will give you your final velocity. So let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. So 2.1 plus 9.81 times 3 seconds. So our VFY, when we calculate it, uh, 2.1 plus 9.81 times 3 will become 31.53 meters per second. All right, so this is our VFY. Now, we know that the 
velocity vector, the final velocity vector, is going to hit the ground. And we know that it has the component, the VFY, and it will also have the component of the VFX. So we want to find what our VF is. We're going to use Pythagoras theorem, which is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. c squared is our vf, vfy is our a, and vfx is our b. So let's go ahead and put those in. So c squared is equal to 31.53 squared plus 4.5 squared. Just erase that for a bit. All right. So then when you go ahead and multiply those together, well, square them and then add them together, 31.53 uh, squ squared plus 4.5 squared, it will give us 1,000 and 14.4. So to find what our C is, we're going to take the square root. So the square root of 1014.4 will be equal to 31.8 meters per second. So this is your VF. Okay. So now let's move on to the last question. Question C. And question C is asking about how far will the ball land from the building? So it's looking for the delta x. So this is the last one. It's really simple. We only need to use one formula. And that formula is the xf is equal to xi plus vi x delta t. If we bring this over, it becomes delta x is equal to vi x delta t. And then we just need to plug in our values. So VIX is 4.5. Your delta T is 3. And so when you multiply that together, 4.5 times 3, you will get a displacement of 13.5 meters. And that is how you would solve this question.